Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London and today I'm looking at a book from Oxford University Press. It's written by uh, Carlos de Stefano and it's called Attribution in International Law and Arbitration. OUP have come up with this book, Oxford University Press. We've given for our review the following title, a highly useful statement for international uh, lawyers on the breach of agreements, which is basically what you've got here. Let's have a little look at the book. It's only a short review that I've done. This is the book. It's a hardback. There it is. There's the front. You can see the spine and then you can see a bit of blurb on the back. Probably can't make too much of it out. On the back you've got some information about other books in, in a sort of series of books of this nature uh, from OUP. This is a guide to the IBA rules, investment rules and so forth. And at the front you've got a detail about Carlos, Dr. Carlos de Stefano is lecturer and postdoc researcher in international law at the Department of Law of Roma Tree University. And then you have the front page here. So he's an experienced uh, writer. There's actually that little front page and then that front page there. Then you've got the blurb about Oxford and then the preface. And I'm just going to refer, refer to the preface in a bit. There's some acknowledgements as well uh, about some of the information in there. Then you've got the content section, setting out what you have, a study on attribution. And then you've got, um, again, split into three parts, basically, the book. Uh, you've then got the table of, of cases, uh, looking at the earlier cases and a whole range of, and then you've got various, it's in fact very much the Iran-US claims tribunal is covered there, the European Court of course, world trade information and so forth. Then you've got table of legislation, then after that you've got the League of Nations and United Nations documents, going back some way now with that, then an introduction, a study on attribution. Now I'm going to just quote from the preface because Carlos mentions here this book aims to clarify, critically discuss and propose solutions for the application of international rules of attribution of conduct to states under public international law in general and more specifically under international investment law. The issue is that of the applicability of the principles of what is called attribution to states of acts that are in breach of their obligations under international custom or international treaties with a focus on their commitments pertaining to the treatment of foreign investors and that's under a number of agreements and so forth without going into anything further. The book itself you can see has uh, basic body text and there's a lot of footnoting all the way through and there is actually useful um, a useful index at the back which very much the uh, structure the for the benefit of digital users it says in the index um, index terms that span two pages may on occasion only appear on one of them so it's by page numbering and then you've got again there's a bibliography of course at the back <coughs> the book I'm just to say the book runs to un under 200 pages but it was an interesting book from the international uh, law area. I don't have much to do with that myself, but I do, as a mediator, I was interested in, in the book from the ADR point of view. As I say, it's a new book from uh, OUP, and it clarifies, as, as I say, and critically discusses the international rules of attribution. And I think it will be great, of great assistance to all of those who are involved in what is the growing importance of ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution Procedures, across the globe. Remember that, that London is quite an important area as far as ADR and certainly arbitration is concerned. That's international arbitration. What you've got here is that the author, um, Carlos de Stefano, examines the key question of how and to what extent breaches of state obligations, particularly in respect of states' commitments to foreign investors under IIAs, that's international investment agreements, and bilateral investment treaties, that's BITs, can be attributed. In other words, they can be attributed or the name can be put to a particular state 
concerning these uh, these types of investment. And of course, that's where the word attribution comes in because it's being attributed to. Now, of special interest within this context then for the reader is the responsibility of states where the alleged breach has been committed by separate legal entities themselves rather than by the state of its own volition. And under domestic law, of course, entities such as state-owned enterprises, SOEs, are considered legally distinct. However, the state itself may still be considered responsible for their actions under international law. And can I say here that I think this is an area that's going to continue to grow, um, obviously when we get out of the COVID-19 pandemic and the issues surrounding the post pandemic era, we will be looking very much at um, the way we see um, global disagreements and global attribution um, actually occurring in the future. It's difficult at this stage to know exactly what's going to happen because the pandemic itself has been has taken everybody by surprise and we haven't really known how to deal with it, <coughs> although we're learning. The book, of course, this one, uh, addresses the relevant issues very systematically, uh, beginning with direct reference to the draft articles on responsibility of states for internationally wrongful acts, that's the ARSIWA, on attribution, who, who is actually what's being attributed to what, and it was that, that of course, that um, particular um, draft set of draft articles were finalised by the International Law Commission, the ILC, in 2001. So it's been a little while since that happened. And if I can just conclude by saying the book goes on to elaborate on the specifics of international investment law itself, based on a detailed examination of practice and case law, whilst of course giving due consideration to the academic debate that, that, that has been raging. And the result of course is what we're getting as the reader is a full innovative take as these are the words of the author here, on one of the most difficult questions in investment arbitration. So I think it's a very great use. I know it's a very specialist area, but it's a very great use to uh, people in, in this particular international area. And the publication date of this hardback uh, edition is, qu is quoted as at the 9th of January 2020, and I'm recording this in the spring of 2020, just as the pandemic is taking um, off. There's the book again, hardback, um, spine, and then there's the back. Some of what is on there I've put into the um, review itself. You can see, again, there is a very substantial use of uh, footnotes. Unfortunately, I think there's rather too much, personally, but you can see even there a lot of it. It's, it's basically to explain expand for researchers a lot of the information given but if you read the basic text without looking at the footnotes you'll get the general um, points that he's making pretty quickly and the usual case law is there so a very big thank you to Carlos and to OUP for the production of what I found to be a fascinating book and very much a book for the future so thank you to all bye bye